Howdy! Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be digging in the scroller box. It's the Oposca pen and I'm excited. Here is this month's scroller box sticker. It's a pink to turquoise or green. A fun texture in between like a screen tone texture, which is really, really cool. Inside we have some art supplies bursting out of the tissue paper. There are Posca pens. If you don't know what Posca pens are, they are acrylic paint inside of a pen. Kind of like the Plumchester markers that we got in the last Art Snacks box. These are like the name brand. So they've been around a while and I think they're from Japan. And this is the color Aqua Green. The 1.8 to 2.5 millimeter bullet shaped nib. You have to prep the nibs on all of these markers before you use them. This one is in the color Lab it is also the exact same size. I'll prep them all at once so I don't get too distracted. This one is coral pink. And then we have two smaller ones, 0.9 to 1.3 millimeter, also bullet shaped nib. Same with the white. And there you can see the smaller nib. These are pretty expensive markers, so it's exciting to have five of them. This is the menu listing the art supplies and the paper as well. Very cool. And then we have two more art supplies. This is the Faber Castell Eco Pigment in 0.6. There you can see the nib. I like the funky bump. And also we have the Mars Lumograph in black. So it'll probably be helpful to use in conjunction maybe with the black Posca pen. Also the treat is a rhubarb and custard drumstick, which I have never had. And it's by the brand Swizzlers, which is not here in the US. If you didn't know, the scrawler box comes from the UK. So it does cost extra to get it shipped to the US, but sometimes it's cool to get a candy you've never heard of. I'll have to try that. And now the scrawler zine. This is always my favorite page. The print. There it is. How cute is that? The artist this month is SP0. Their social media links. That's so cool. They got their art on the actual pad of paper. Perfect for Posca's, the A5 marker sketch pad. I've never heard of this artist. I'm gonna have to look them up. I love the sort of like graffiti-esque doodle style. So it looks like these three colors probably chosen by the artist. So that's cool too. We get to use those all together. Another favorite part of like the little zine is the part where the artist gives tips and some more of their art. I always pencil the art in first until I get it right, then go in with the pen. If you do make a mistake, wait until it dries and use the white to blank it out. You can actually leave your markers in a glass of water to reprime them. You can actually dilute Posca pens with water to get a watercolor effect since the paints are water-based. I would never have thought to do that. I once used Posca pens on a hard boiled egg and like the egg was just slightly damp at the bottom. That actually did end up happening and it worked really, really cool because I made these like floral flowers and it was very painterly and because it was wet, it actually blended the colors a lot easier. And I don't think I really realized that's what was happening until I just read this. So very cool. I'm gonna prep these. I'll meet you back when it's time to swatch. There's the white, beautiful. I like to do that stuff inside the box because then if it does spill or anything, they're pretty well contained. It's looking like this pencil's not gonna be very erasable. So let's find out. Oh, that is smooth. I usually like paper with a little bit of texture, but that might not be what you're looking for when you're using Posca pens. I'm gonna start doodling with this pencil because I haven't used it before. It's a little scratchy. It does have a matte black texture, which is cool. And then was this black? Now that's black. Give these each a little swatch. There's something just magical about a Posca pen. I think it's the opaqueness. It's something else. So those are a lot thicker. They're not gonna be able to get super detailed. It does give me sort of monster colors. Oops, I smudged the purple. You do have to wait for them to dry. Do I wanna try like the gradient technique? So like if you go red and while that's still wet, you move into like the purple, blend them together. While that's still wet, blend that into the green. I mean, it kind of looks like a gradient. Kind of like go back and forth and you actually layer them multiple times to get them to mix together. And that's what I did with this nail. I definitely want to take a little tidbit out of their style with the thick, heavy line art, the sporadic color. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Should I try and just draw something that I would usually draw and see how the art supplies translate into that before I try to get too crazy? I also want to draw big because this is the nib size we're working with. I'm gonna try drawing sort of chibi or something. I don't know when the last time I did that was. Small bodies, big heads, big hands, that sort of thing. Should I go big eyes? Little eyes look a little weird. 
I also want to draw a big turtleneck for some reason, so I'm gonna go with that. I just really loved drawing that sweater in the last one. I'm gonna continue something like that. I also don't know how well the art supplies is actually gonna layer on top of this pencil, or if I need to give it like a slight erase. We'll find out. I think this sweater I'll do longer. Kind of break my crop cycle. <laughs> like a little dress with like some pants. <laughs> this is basically just what I drew in the last art snacks, but deal with it. I feel like we should do some kind of earring or earmuffs or something cozy. Earrings. What about like those short bangs? I'm not vibing with that. Yeah, I was right. This pencil doesn't really erase, but luckily our art supplies are very opaque. But just something simple. Ooh, that's kind of cute. Well, let's go with this. Give her a little extra eyeliner. Mouth's a little off center. Scooch it a smidge without redrawing the whole thing. It's gonna be hard to erase after I already have the Posca pen. Softly lighten it a smidge. Just so it wouldn't like, if I use the white one, hopefully it won't like drag the pencil. I really like the way this one is shaded. Like it's a white unicorn and they use that to shade. I have to think very cartoony and cell shading. I think that's the only way we're really gonna get away with these art supplies in my style. I wonder if I could go over everything Thing with this then add the color and like slightly go over this and then I'll know where I need to go with the thicker line I don't think it could hurt in this last words <laughs> then I can thicken up the lines with the Posca as well I'm nervous to add in the color before I'm like 100% sure about what I'm doing I think by adding in this slight liner first it'll just calm me down the other thing is we have the white Tosca pen, so if there's any little mistakes with the small liner, I can fix it before it's a big mistake, eh? Okay, I don't think I should be doing anything like finely detailed like that, because we are going to be going over it with the Posca. Funny little mouth, I don't think I've drawn one like that recently. Now this turtleneck, do I want it to go over the chin or under the chin? I feel like over the chin would be cuter. That was a good choice. I love drawing big baggy clothes, but I also like drawing tight clothes. You can see I did a nice compromise. A little bit of depth and line variation. Since I want to have a lot of that by the end of this, might as well start as soon as possible. When people draw like perfect stars, like I think there's a lot to be said about how cool that is, but I also love me a funky little guy. <laughs> Well, there's that. The best way to approach this with color might be to approach every shape the way the unicorn is colored, like as if we're shading it. If it's a spot that I decide needs to be fully colored in, we can do that. If it's a spot that I don't want to color it in, we haven't, right? I'm gonna take the black Posca and outline some of these stars to make them thicker. I also just noticed there's spots where there's like a white line around stuff. You know what? I think I'm just gonna try an experiment and color her the way the unicorn is. So we'll use the green for the skin. Now it's okay to go over the lines. That's why they're there. The light will be maybe here. Mix up a little bit more. Make her face a little bit more circular. Okay, now the purple hair. Well, they had full gradient hair, but let's just do the purple. We can probably go in with the black Posca, thicken some of these lines. Pushing back the depth in a lot of places. I think because there's like thicker lines now, the eyes need to be thicker. Deepen that eyeliner. I if I can like take some of this away with the white. Do I like that better? Gonna clean up some of that graphite that's showing through. I'm also gonna try that like white line. I think it was just kind of messy before. Do you think I'll use this thin liner for this? I'm thinking purple lips. And then for the shirt, let's do that same sort of coloring in the shadows with the red. A little bit bolder down here. We really want to use the red. Now we can clean up those edges with the white. Seems like how it works the best. Not a fan of the color scheme so far. I think I'll use purple for the legs, just because if I use green, I think it's gonna look like it's skin. This one just like this. Definitely needs more black. That has a lot more black in it. I wonder if I should be using the black more as shading in some places. Maybe here? 
Ooh, now that I added the black lines, I like the legs a little better. The thicker lines definitely kind of help pull it together, but something, I don't know if it's the color scheme, something's not digging right. It looks like the top of a water bottle. Make the eyes bigger. I'm gonna use the white to clean up some of these lines. I can also use it to like clean up this edge. Kind of give it a more polished look. I think what I'm fighting with is it does need to be simple. And that's kind of what I was going for from the beginning, but I think I didn't quite win that battle. So I might need to try again. Simplify it even more. I'm kind of proud of myself for going for the green with the skin because I definitely would not normally do that. Hopefully I have little uh, cheek circles. I'm going to add a much thicker black line to the bottom right, because that's where like the shadow is. Double it up. Maybe do it to the stars as well. I think the green skin is throwing me off. So I'm gonna take this off. And what I think I'm gonna do is just draw this sort of exact same character, but try to simplify it even more. Maybe not draw the nose. I don't know. I just need to add less details. Pencils back. Let's try it again. I'm gonna draw the head maybe bigger, little body with arms. No details, which is weird because there is a lot going on here. It's not like super simple, but it is simplified. Shapes. Make this kind of bigger. Now this looks good to me. <laughs> That's all I had to do. Let's use the Posca. Draw in these bold, simplified shapes. Skip the lips. There's no eyebrows. Just throw one up here. It's an interesting shape here. Squishy looking hand. Like. That was really fun. I don't know if I care for the result, but I really like going in with the thick marker and just sort of doing whatever. I wanna try doing more solid colors this time. I wanna use colors you'd maybe imagine for things. So like this for the blush and maybe a nose, the ears. We could also probably do lips. See how thin we can get them. We'll do black with the sweater. I should do a little thumbnail, shouldn't I? Do it up in this little corner. <laughs> black sweater. Probably just leave the skin white. I was thinking purple for the hair, but then like the purple and red are kind of similar in hue. I mean, they're closer than green and red, which are literally opposites. Green next to the red. I really like the purple with the black. I guess I should try it the opposite and see. Thumbnails get simpler and simpler. I like the green with the black too. What about when the red's up here? When the red's up there, I definitely think the green makes more sense because of contrast and whatnot. I guess it's purple leggings. They're not too different. I'm gonna color in a little bit at a time with the black that I hopefully don't forget. Lines that mattered to me. Here was supposed to be green. I love the way it covers over the pencil. It's like it was never even there. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do another layer with the green. It's got little splotches. This black's dry, I wanna try do this. Ooh, I think we need to use this for a lot of different things. Do a little highlight. Black. Probably gonna need multiple layers. Although that's working really well. Maybe it just needed a little extra prep. It's also a very tiny nib, so this wasn't the best idea. Trying to keep that line where the seam is on the sweater. It'll probably end up being smaller than that, but it's kind of important. Mm. I'm gonna let that dry. Then I'm gonna go over where I want the white. And then I'll fill in the extra black spaces. Go over these lines. I'm gonna have to go over all the lines just because of the nature of the art supply. I wonder if I could use purple as like a little shadow in the hair. Sweater as well. A little Tim Burton-y looking now, especially with like the white spaces. Let's try and uh, tackle those. I do like this colors a lot better. One of the issues with this is that there's sort of equal parts of all three colors competing with each other, whereas this is like overwhelmingly black and then it has like hints of other colors. It's probably equal parts of green and purple, so I wonder if I should throw in more purple to fight that off. 
you went too far. White, save me. Red on the knuckles. Do I want to add in the stars? Kind of miss the earrings. Kind of compositionally spread around there. Touch up some of this graphite where it's like super obvious along this edge. I don't know why that makes it just look so much more polished to me. I could be wrong, but that's how I feel about it. I might put a star right here. Add another layer. I like this. I actually think I like both of them now. That journey made me realize that it's not that bad. I definitely tend to be hypercritical at times. It's a very easy trap to fall into. And I know a lot of you do too, just from discussing it with you in the comments. So it happens to everyone. Sometimes when you just take a break or take a breather with a different illustration, you can kind of appreciate a different piece more. It's kind of cute. They're like totally different styles. This, I thought I was exaggerating my style, but now looking at it, it looks so much closer to my style than this one because this one's even more hyper exaggerated. See, it's all just a matter of perspective. I'm gonna try to just doodle some little things on this piece. Kind of see what happens. I'm gonna draw straight with the Posca for this first one. Wait a minute, I kind of changed my mind. <laughs> this is too scary. Let's not be too crazy. I want to draw smaller with the big head again. This used to be what I'd call my jelly bean style, but I'm so out of practice. I don't even want to call it that because my jelly bean style kind of morphed into what I draw all the time. Draw a little sitting person. That fun shape for the hair, I think. It's just kind of simple. What I'm really kind of trying to do is focus on using the art supplies. Why don't we just do bare feet? Then we can incorporate more red down here. So now that we know what colors are going where, we can kind of just jump in and do that immediately. Knowing what you're drawing is half the battle, which is why it's always a good idea to draw something multiple times, especially if you're trying to make a finished illustration. <laughs> You'll learn little like quirks and ways to like simplify it. I probably could just do the color. I kind of understand the shapes. I don't think I'll forget them. Should we try green eyebrows? <laughs> we'll see how long those last. I wonder if I do this while it's still wet, how that'll look. Cheeks and ears. Kind of cute. Let's do a little red toes and ankle. Need some black for the face here. Doing a tiny mouth. I think that's something I used to do with the jelly bean. Go over some of these lines. Kind of got obliterated with the color. See, that's why it kind of makes sense to just go in with color first because you're gonna have to go over the line art again anyway. I need the white. Try and add that little extra something that I've decided was cool. I used purple for like an interesting rim light or something. I definitely kind of want to erase the pencil, but I want to make sure it's completely dry before I do that. We still have space here to draw this same character though. So we might try again. One where they're standing there. Torso's here, turtleneck. <gasps> Would that be cute if the turtleneck was the same size as the head? Or is that too much? I like the tiny mouth. I think it's funny. Now that hair might be too long. Little fingers sticking out. That's where the shirt ends. You have a leg and another leg and then the foot. Okay, let's try adding in the color for this. Kind of like this, like, sort of simplified. What is that called? Order of operations? I don't know. What do you call it? Pattern? No. Some days you just feel stupid. I'm still thinking about that word. I'm so lost. I'll just have to Google it and put it on the screen. I like this funky shape. That's what being warmed up will do for you. You can do these funky shapes. And purple. I really like the way the purple and the green layer together. I think that was a good direction to go and I'm very happy. A little blush. Oh, and the ears. And the toes and the fingies. Purple legs. And we need the liner. 
<laughs> you like the way the face looks like it's being squished into the turtleneck. That's a good look. Keep adding that one nostril because I feel like that's all that'd be visible. Drawing smaller also seems to help with simplifying things because like there's just no room to add those details. So you have to find ways to just cheat. Simplify, sorry. I wanna do the same thing where I erase and then add in the highlight. Hopefully this is looking good. Let's do the first layer so I can come back. Try and erase this and hopefully nothing bad happens. It's working. Add in our final little highlights. I was so worried that that was gonna like drag the color, but it didn't. So black. Sharpen up those purple lines. Thicken some of them up. They're not white anywhere. That's cute. I think I'll take the line art and add in our stars. Whoa, that turned out good. Did you see that? Beautiful. It's not dry enough to layer. What about the eyeball. Do whatever that thing was with the white. It does need thinner liner. Kind of connect these lines them a little slimmer for some of these lines that got a little bit buried. I don't want to add too many fine lines. There we go. Now it's working. Just had to wait for that to dry. The blue again. Soften up those purples. Gotta add in our stars. But you know what I just realized? I never added liner to these fingies. I really like this liner. It's a 0.6. Oh, I just realized the sun's coming in. I mean, it's kind of pretty. Anyway. <laughs> this was really fun, like kind of experimenting almost with like different art styles. Well, I guess exactly what it was. You know, trying to find an art style that sort of suits the medium, which was fun. I usually try not to do that because it kind of usually spooks me a little, but this is something I have dabbled with in the past. So I think it was extra fun. I really like the tiny ones. I'm probably gonna cut these out and put them in my sketchbook. So this was the first one where I was kind of trying to replicate the style of the featured artist. Not the style, but the, like the coloring style, I guess. And then I tried to simplify it a little bit more. And I also adjusted the color schemes to something that felt more me. And I really liked it. So then I draw out little tiny ones and kind of exaggerated the shapes a little bit more, which was really, really fun. I do need to give a big thank you to Scrawlerbox for sending this my way to try out and to share with you guys. I have a link for a small discount in the description if it's your first box. Also, just thanks for sticking with me and making it to the end of this video. It really means a lot to me and I'm just so lucky to have you, to be honest. I'm at a loss for words. So just thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!